Cool. Uh, so, I'm really happy about it. So thank you all for coming. Uh, I I don't do I need to introduce you? I don't think so. <laughs> No. Go for it. Uh, <laughs> Jacob Kevin Mossy kind of co-made this thing that we all are giant fans of. He works at RevSys. He's really smart. He forced me to have one of my main monikers be Other Jacob because I uh, I am not the main one in this community, and I'm okay with that. So uh, that, that's all. Take it away. All right. Thanks, Jacob. Um, and thanks to Mahalo for posting this. It's very nice of them and you guys, and pass Jason on my thanks. I appreciate it. Um, so I imagine most people here are consider yourself web developers. Yeah, who, who's, who's a developer? Any, any ops people in the house? SysOps, operations engineers? Okay, there's a couple of you. All right, well, I'm, you, you guys, I'm gonna be behind you guys, the ops people, but all of y'all developers in the house are gonna be a little bit surprised because I'm really not going to talk about web development at all. This is kind of a bait and switch thing. It's like, oh, here, here's someone talk about Django. And in fact, um, after maybe the next slide, I don't think I'm going to mention Django again until close to the very end. But we'll get to that. Um, tell you a bit about me. Um, I, I guess I helped write Django. More, more accurate would be to say that I was there when it was originally written and then I helped open source it. Uh, I, I worked at the Lawrence Journal World, uh, the newspaper in Lawrence, Kansas, where Django originally was developed. Um, when I was hired in 2004, uh, Django was just this little news CMS that had been built by Adrian Halavati and Simon Willison. And we continued to hack on it for about a year and open sourced it in 2005. Um, I haven't written many websites in about three years. Um, these days, I, I mostly do deployment. Um, I, I have a small company and we specialize in web deployment, obviously with a focus on Python and Django, but I mean, we have a couple of Rails clients. We do a tiny bit of Perl work when we can't avoid it. And you know, generally sort of float in whatever world we need to to do deployment. Um, so, you know, I'm a, I really, I'm, although I consider myself a web developer, when I look at what I do during the day, my job looks a lot more like that of uh, an ops engineer, a, a sysop, a system administrator, a bastard operator from hell, whatever. Um, so this, this talk, this is a, a uh, talk, sort of a preview of a talk that I'm going to be gi giving this weekend in New Zealand. Um, and they asked me to come to give the web talk. And I sort of said, you know, sure, I'll give a web talk. And as I started to think about it, honestly, I have trouble staying passionate about web development because since the sort of, at least back end web development, hasn't really changed much since 2004, 2005. Right around that time, you had Django and you had Rails and you had all of these sort of cool frameworks being developed. And we had sort of this great leap forward in web technology. And since then, most of that focus has moved to the front end. And I'm not qualified to really to speak about that. And, and frankly, I think it's a bit of a fad, so I'm not particularly excited about that either. Um, so I kind of pulled a little bait and switch here, and I'm just going to talk about um, operations instead. Um, these are, by the way, the first draft of the slides. I want you to imagine that's, the, that's Nelson from The Simpsons pointing and going, ha ha, I haven't had time to do my uh, uh, copyright infringement work to get the images on these slides completely. So you get this, the, the rough draft, the beta version. Um, and in particular, I'm going to talk about DevOps. Okay, now, now look, DevOps is one of these terms that's maybe 60% bullshit. Like Ajax, like NoSQL, like web scale. <laughs> it's one of those terms that when people say it, you always kind of wonder whether they're trying to sell you something. But, but, but the thing is, I think that there is actually some important stuff in this, in this term, in this, this um, conception of DevOps, and this idea of development and operations sort of starting to merge and starting to become one. And, and to explain what I mean, um, let me give you an analogy. Um, back when I started doing web development, we had DBAs. Um, does anyone here work at a company where you have DBAs, database administrators? Okay, a couple of you. If I'd asked that question a decade ago, almost everyone would have raised their hand because databases were these big scary things that were hard to run, often really expensive, and required dedicated staff 
to, to set them up. And when you wanted to develop a website, you, you sort of needed your DBA to sort of set up the schema for you. And then oftentimes, you really had, as a developer, no real control over the way that that schema worked. Um, the idea being that you know data storage and presentation were these two totally separate concerns and you needed people specialized in, in each in order to be able to get things done. But then of course MySQL took off, PostgreSQL took off, SQLite, the database that you can fit on a telephone, appeared. And si simultaneously we noticed that Databases, while this idea of separation of, of, of data and presentation you know, sounds good, in practice it, it just doesn't work. You know, you're, over time, your data models evolve more and more and more to look like your, your UI. And that's not a bad thing, that's just how development works. And so over time, the DBA role started to get absorbed into that of the developer. And, and these days, if you use any modern web framework, designing your schema is part of the framework. I mean, go look at the Django tutorial. Part two of the tutorial is what a DBA used to do. That's part of what has empowered this, this sort of revolution in web development is the, not really elimination of the DBA role, but more the absorption of that role into what everyone does as a developer. These days, if I'm interviewing a candidate for a, a web developer position, questions about SQL, questions about database triggers, questions about transactions, ACID, fair game for a developer. A decade ago, probably not. Ed Dumble really summed this up really well applied to ops. He said, um, about two years ago now, we're all ops people now. So the idea again, to following along with this analogy, isn't that operations engineers are going away, and it isn't that we don't need sysops or IT staff anymore, but that role is getting merged more and more into our role as developers. So this can start to sound really scary if you're a new developer and you sort of, I just want to write a website, why do I have to think about inodes and, and, and uh, you know, f locks and all these crazy Unix beard stuff. You know, I don't have, you know, peop I don't see anyone here with a good enough neck beard to really understand this stuff. So. Um, this can sort of start to sound pretty scary, but here's, <laughs> took you a while, huh? But, here, but here's the thing that, uh, here's sort of the good news, and here's the exciting thing about DevOps. Everything you need to know about DevOps, you already know. You already know all of these things. What, what I'm going to do for the next 30 minutes is tell you a bunch of stuff you already know, and just explain to you why it still applies when you move into the operations realm. One way that I think of DevOps, and this is sort of a developer central role and it annoys some of my friends who came, who came the other way into DevOps, but the way I think of DevOps is it's the operations staff, the systems administrators, learning the lessons that we developers learned a long time ago. So you can see this in some small ways, right? Um, everything that you do goes in source code, in source code control, right? There are tools like Etsy Keeper, which will actually keep your entire Etsy directory in a source code repository. It's sort of rough grained, but we're starting to see these tools being developed that are letting people keep their configuration, keep their server setups in source control. Now we as developers know this, right? When was the last time you wrote a bunch of code that you, never, you intended never to check in to source control? It's kind of not done. It's something that we've all sort of accepted as part and parcel of the job of being a developer. Well, I'm telling you it's part and parcel of being a good operations engineer. We all learned a long time ago that we're not to edit files directly on the server. When we, anyone who's done that, and I've sure done it, you get burned. It hurts. And yet, sysadmins, you know, keep dozens of SSH consoles all the day and edit open all day and edit stuff directly on the server. We learned lessons like DRY, don't repeat yourself. You know, what, what's Martin Fowler's thing? Uh, the first time you do something, do it. The second time, bite your lip and do it again. Third time, refactor. 